So we'll move on to our uh, final presentation, uh, which is from um, Kat Trinder up in um, West Yorkshire Health and Care uh, Partnership. So um, are you sharing your slides, Kat? I am. I am. Just bear with me a second. Right. Hopefully you can all see that. We can, yes. Super. Great stuff. Right. Well, Firstly, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to present this to you today. Um, it is a little bit cold all the way up north, uh, <laughs> up in Yorkshire. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd uh, take a moment just to introduce myself. So my name is Kat Trinder. I am the Communications, Engagement and Partnerships Officer at the West Yorkshire Health and Care Partnership. Um, and my, my boss, Jess, will be jumping well, be dipping in and out of this presentation. Um, she is the suicide prevention project manager and her contact details are on the screen at the moment if you want to do any follow ups. She's also very active on Twitter, so I've included her Twitter handle there as well. So just to uh, just to do a little bit of an introduction and to kind of set the scene um, in terms of how the West York Suicide Prevention website has come about. The, the the landscape in West Yorkshire is, is as simple as too many people take their own lives within the region. Um, our partnership um, has basically pledged to reduce the suicide rate by 10% across West Yorkshire in the next five years. Um, we have a vision to create a zero suicide West Yorkshire. Um, however, there was a need that was identified um, to basically work with wider stakeholders within within the region and around the system to basically understand more about what support was on offer for, for people who had suicidal ideation um, or who you know were thinking about obviously taking their own lives and there was a, a very much a need in terms to map the voluntary and community sector um, you know basically see what what was out there um, across the whole of West Yorkshire because each individual the five different areas that make up West Yorkshire are all very different and have different resources on offer so that was kind of where the website um, idea came about um, and that was developed in conjunction with those that have obviously lived experience um, either of suicidal ideation or who have been bereaved by suicide or affected by suicide in, in some way. Um, the idea was to basically create a, a platform um, that was a bit of a one stop shop um, and included re resources and different um, helplines and things from across the West Yorkshire region. And we worked with um, a group of different organisations. So um, it was co-produced, it wasn't just us doing this by ourselves. We went out and worked with a number of different organisations. So from the voluntary sector, from the wider NHS and also local authorities as well. Uh, so working with the different public health leads in each area too. Um, so all of these people are working to reduce death by suicide across the region and it was really important that we harness that and pull all that together in order to create one platform um, and we wanted this to be very much um, a resource that supports what is already existing at place in terms of suicide prevention offering but just making it much clearer for people and it was all in one place and I guess it was about having this vision of it, you know, collaboration, working with others, celebration, allowing us to have somewhere that we can elevate people um, and the organisations that are actually on the ground doing all this great work across West Yorkshire and really shouting about it and what they've achieved and also motivation. So, um, you know, motivating or the voluntary sector organisations to kind of come forward and, and you know put in for grants for suicide prevention work and uh, and also to motivate people who may land on the website who may be in crisis themselves um, to actually seek help um, in order to prevent loss further loss of life and um, so this is the website that we produced which will hopefully launch I'm just building up suspense, everybody. <laughs> there we go. Um, so this is basically the 
uh, West Yorkshire Suicide Prevention website. Um, as you can see, the first pop up that, that appears, we really wanted there to be kind of a gateway. So if somebody is landed on this page and they are in emotional distress or, or having suicidal ideation, we want them to have the option to go straight to the place where they need to get help urgently. Um, so that's basically how we, we kind of mapped out the site. Um, so we have the urgent I need help urgently page and we tried to split that down um, the best that we can in terms of the different areas um, and also the adult and children and young people services as well um, just so that we're hopefully reducing the amount of clicks for people they're not having to sit there scrolling for ages you know if, if somebody is in the middle of a crisis we want to make it as easy as possible um, and also display all the, the relevant information and, and try and keep on top of that as, as much as we can. Um, Another of the key areas on the website is the Bereaved by Suicide tab. Uh, so again, um, another audience um, that we wanted to, to kind of reach out to, who we know um, if somebody has been bereaved by suicide, statistics show um, they are more at risk of, of taking their own lives statistically. Um, so we wanted to, to kind of showcase uh, the, the West Yorkshire Suicide Bereavement Service, which is, is kind of funded from our pot of money that we get from NHS England um, and really kind of shout about that um, and, and encourage people to use that service because a lot of people don't know that the, that service is actually out there. Uh, a lot of people struggle in silence. Um, but we've also listed a lots of other bereavement uh, services on on there as well. So we want we want to give people um, an option on there. Um, there's also a, a number of uh, we've tried to break it down by area as well. So that if people are looking for specific support within their area, that we've obviously got the uh, the crisis lines on there and some of the um, you know the other voluntary sector organisations that they can can seek. Uh, help from um, and just trying to make it hopefully a lot more streamlined and a lot simpler for people to find that information. Um, we also have a, a number of suicide prevention resources which um, again this is this website is by no means the finished article um, and this is something that is very much a moving feast and we will keep populating as we kind of go along um, but we tried to make it again as easy as possible for people so we've created these different subheadings um, you know we try and make it as easy for people to find information as they can it's a bit of a directory in terms of anything suicide prevention um, so people can go on there and obviously watch films um, and it provides links through to um, you know different different uh, different third party um, websites and, th and things as well so again we're building that out all the time we're trying to make it as dynamic and interesting as possible so if anybody does have any um, suggestions around that then then by all means let me know uh, towards the end um, and we also have a, a, a news and blog section so I know before I talked about collaboration and celebration and and again this is very much um, what this area is about so as part of my job um, I work with the uh, a number of different networks including the voluntary and community sector network um, again working with people that are at the forefront of suicide prevention across West Yorkshire and giving them an opportunity to basically shout about the great work that they do so as you can see on there you know we've got um, case studies on there from the Yorkshire Ambulance Service who have, have used the staff checking campaign as a, a you know have rolled out that out to their staff and um, talking about you know checking in with people checking on mental health and, and the impacts that that can have on obviously su suicidal ideation as well but we pull all this information together um, into a, a, a newsletter as well that we send out monthly so people can have um, you know that kind of monthly reminder in terms of what's going on across West Yorkshire but also nationally as well obviously recently we put on the the suicide prevention VCSE grant fund which um, is due to launch today I've been refreshing the page all day and nothing seems to have changed as yet um, but yes yeah, so we want to try and make suicide prevention the forefront and having that continual reminder so we we do 
encourage people to sign up um, for that as well. We do have a number of blogs on the site as well, um, and we try and encourage um, people with um, lived experience to come forward um, and basically tell their story um, because we believe that very much strongly believe that you know the more people talk about it the more we're reducing the stigma around suicide so a good example on here was um, Dr Lisa Edwards um, who is somebody who herself has been uh, exper has experienced suicide um, and she will be speaking at one of our Suicide Prevention Advisory Network uh, meetings that we've got coming up in the new year. Um, so, you know, we really want people to be telling their stories and, and sharing best practice. And, you know, it's it's very much about just trying to shout about it as, as much as we can. Um, and we're always trying to populate that page the best that we can. Um, and finally, just kind of bringing it on to suicide prevention training so basically you know we have all the different resources on the website however what we really want people to be doing is obviously taking the training and saving a life um so we do encourage people to um to visit this page see what's on offer we do have a number of uh, obviously local training providers that we list on there um national um national offerings as well um and obviously online training, you know, there's some some free online videos on there too. So again, this is something that that we're looking to to build out and continually improve on. So again, it's it's just um, yeah, kind of maybe getting some thoughts from from you guys as well. If you've got a similar platform in your area, I guess for us, what we don't want this to become is just a, a, a mental health. Um, portal you know it is very much specific we want it to be specific around suicide prevention and I guess it's kind of where we draw the line in terms of the resources that we actually um, include on this page um, because obviously there are a number of different um, characteristics um, you know well no, sorry not characteristics a number of different factors that obviously influence somebody to think you know to have suicidal ideation and, and things like that but yeah i guess it's just it can't be um just a massive directory um so yeah so i don't know um jess do you want to come in and, and mention anything if you think i've missed anything oh no i don't think you've missed anything Kat. but it's great thank you i think what's really important is that in west yorkshire we sort of came to came together as an oversight group and, and as you all have, I'm sure, re really understood that we're not going to bring um, the suicide rate down alone as a group of professionals. And I suppose our strategy looks at sort of creating um, <clears throat> a creating a whole um, movement for change across West Yorkshire over the next five years. And I think the website, which is public facing, facing citizen facing, provides was the was kind of one of the building blocks to take that forward, really. And um, when I came into post earlier on this year, there was a lot of confusion I noted around um, what services were available to whom and when, particularly as our ICS has got um, you know three different CCGs, five different local authorities, and um, like many um, that you work up, work part of it's a complex picture. Um, with um, different setups in different areas. So it's trying to offer the public, but also colleagues within the system, some clarity around that and provide one portal really for all resources to be shared. So as Kat said, a tricky situation for us that we have to deal with every day is what's being included and what should not be included. So I believe that knowledge is power. And I believe that if we know information such as that was shared with us earlier um, by, um, by Lewis, you know, that we should, we should share that as far and wide because that knowledge will help people to alter their work and alter their li alter their lives and, and and the way and the way we live our lives and to to really understand suicide risk and risk factors, um, and that's something that we're sort of grappling with at the moment. But the expansion of the sort of newsletter that Kat mentioned, the expansion of the suicide prevention advisory network to to include hundreds of people who want to create a movement for change in suicide reduction is a really key part of this and those three things work work together really and so we've, we're, we're really chuffed we've got Alice from Ripple coming to our next um, network meeting to talk about the tool because what I want is for those people who um, for example who 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 work in IT 
um, and who have access to change whole systems for people across West Yorkshire to make those changes. I really want to um, inspire people really to, to work with us to reduce the suicide rate because people who work in public health or in ICS roles can't, can't do it alone. And I suppose that's the kind of movement for change we want to create. So yeah, um, really happy to have been allowed to present this element of the work today that we're, we're doing in West Yorkshire and happy to take any questions or, or comments or suggestions from people really, because it is a work in progress. Thanks. Great, thanks Kat and uh, Jessica. I was wondering how, um, in, you, you, I might have missed it earlier in your presentation, but in terms of involvement from either um, people have either been in that situation before of considering suicide or bereaved by suicide, what sort of input you've had in terms of in terms of that? Because it does look really informed, and you know, as soon as you go onto that website, that first pop up that comes up, you know, when I looked, I thought, you know, this has really been thought about, um, and you can see that straight in the first instance. But I was just wondering. Um, sort of involvement really of people with, with lived experience um, so far? Yeah, so in terms of the branding, um, lots of lots of involvement. Um, we ran with some um, with, with some um, in, in Trailblazers investment the year before I started work, we ran a project with middle aged men and uh, a, a lot of those individuals had input into what the brand and the feel looked like and the navigability as well. In terms of um, making sure the content was right, and um, yes, individuals with lived experience were included, but probably um, equally importantly, we just included loads of frontline organisation representatives, and also those who developed similar um, websites uh, um, in the region as well, just to make sure that we weren't we were adding value and not 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 um, reproducing anything that already existed. Um, but it is a it is a it's not a produced and finished article. So it, like I said, like I've tried to explain, it's, it's it's part of this kind of ongoing movement for change. And so it needs to be resourced. And so um, Kat's post is, is linked to that. Um, and the Suicide Prevention Oversight Group has set aside funding to make sure that 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 happens so that our kind of yeah our movement for change can can can, can grow really so yes lots and lots and lots of collaboration with our with our partners which um potentially made the launch a little bit later than i would have liked but i think we've got we've got nothing but good feedback so far um but you know we we, we welcome all <laughs> Thank you. Has anyone um, from other areas or regions had uh, any experience in this? Any thoughts, suggestions or, or comments for Kat and uh, Jessica? Neil, over to you. Hi Jess, nice to see you again. Uh, yeah, it, just uh, just on the training side of it. Hi, Kat. Thanks for the presentation. Just on the training side of it, what we did with our website was we've put on a training framework. Uh, so we've we've tried to make it as easy as possible for people to identify what level of a four tier kind of framework they would go in at training. Uh, so whether they're a member of the public that might want to just do level one, very basic, or up to level four, be an assist. Uh, kind of training as, as very different levels. Not saying it's the right thing, it's the best thing, but that's just kind of a different idea on how we've got the training on our on our local Cheshire and Merseyside website. So I'm happy to send over the link to you if you just want to have a look at that. It's quite a lot of work in the background to it because you obviously need to update the actual framework with all the new training that may come in. Uh, but what we try and do is assess it against the uh, Health Education England uh, core competency framework to make sure that obviously it's it's acceptable and, and can go on there and um, we try and keep it up to date as much as we possibly can obviously there's lots of training out there and we might miss things but we try and have different options for the four different uh, tiers both for suicide prevention and suicide bereavement uh, training as well so I'll pop the link over to you yeah that'd be great thank you okay. Neil yeah, no worries that's super useful and definitely I feel that the training pages on our site are the ones that are kind of least advanced in a way and we need to do a bit more work in particularly because there's such a lack of training available locally actually in West Yorkshire uh, but that should change in the near future as well so yeah that's 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 super useful thanks Neil Great thank 
couple of uh, comments as well, which hopefully you can both see see in the chat. I was wondering if I could ask a, a question around how you um, did your asset mapping. So in terms of you know knowing what was around, was that knowledge already available to you? But it was a um, you know, pulling it together. So the reason I asked, we, we've got um, an advancing mental health equality collaborative, and as part of that, we're supporting areas to do asset mapping. And I was just wondering how how it worked for you, if if that knowledge was already around, or just how that process was really. So I think uh, it's a combination of answers really. So it's ongoing. So we will have people emailing us saying, "Why aren't we included in your website?" And I say, "Well, you have to tell us that you exist. That's one thing." And um, I think it really helps that. Um, this is my first job in a statutory organisation, so I've only ever worked in the voluntary sector. Um, so, I mean, so, so some of it is personal and just my knowledge of what's going on on the ground. Um, there was a Trailblazers initial initiative a year uh, in 2019, 2020, in which our, uh, our colleagues spent a year mapping organisations that work with middle aged men in particular, uh, because that was a cohort we were trying to trying to work. That project was called Great Minds. And so really, this was a legacy of that investment. And um, there were lots of organisations on there. But then, as I said, it's an ongoing process. It's not perfect. And actually, um, you know, uh, it, what's what's hard with this particular website is, is it not becoming, I didn't want it to become a uh, mental health directory for the whole of West Yorkshire, because that would be an impossible job. It's drawn the line in terms of uh, what, what's a, what's an organisation or a body or a uh, project or a statutory service that works with people who are suicidal or prevent suicide and, 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 and what isn't and I find that really still difficult to navigate actually because actually everything suicide prevention isn't it doing anything you know that connects people is um, preventative preventative so yeah so that's hopefully that's answered your question I think it's an iterative process and it's not something that you can say you've done things change continuously, which is why you need the investment of a human resource to sit alongside the website to get that right, because otherwise it becomes really rapidly out of date, I think. Yeah, yeah. and you, I can imagine you don't want someone to visit the website only to, you know, the blockers or not be able to access what, what they're looking for, outdate links, etc. So uh, I can uh, I can completely relate to that. Um, there's um, a question from Beth. Um, in the chat, something about hide your tracks function, which I'm not aware of. I don't know, Beth, if you could add a little bit more information around that. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. OK, I'm on wireless headphones. I didn't know if they'd work. Um, hide your tracks is a function that's quite regularly used on sites uh, for domestic abuse and things like that. And it's just a, a function that uh, if you click it, it will take you immediately to Google or a generic web, web page so people can't see that you've been looking at a website. And some of them will tell you how to delete your search history. And it's, yeah, I, I can see why there would be reasons that you might not use it because you might want, you know, might want your family or friends to see that, but it's just an option. People might feel a bit safer if they're on a shared device. It's just a thought. No, thank you for that, Beth. That's that's good feedback. I had not heard of that before, so I think it's really useful for us to, co to consider and to check what that what that looks like and if there's a cost to it. So definitely we'll take it forward. Thanks, Beth. If you want to look at an example, um, our so Nottingham City and Nottinghamshire have a domestic abuse website uh, service called Equation. Um, and they have a hide your tracks function on there, which is quite effective if you wanted to check it out. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Beth. Uh, if you're able to put a link to Equation in the chat, that would be really useful just in case anyone wants to um, to have a look at that or uh, refer back to it later. Um, I will. Brilliant. Thank you, Beth. And your headphones work perfectly. So um, I think um, if there aren't any uh, further uh, questions, then we draw today um, to a close. Just want to thank uh, all of our presenters today. Um, it's been a really interesting and inspiring um, learning set, uh, our last one of the year. So uh, we'll have the um, recordings on our website uh, within the next week or so.